All right, let's take a look at how to use the sum formula for sine to evaluate sine of alpha plus beta, if we know what sine of alpha is and what sine of beta is. Now the first step when attacking any problem like this, where you're not given the angles, you're just given some alpha and beta unknowns here, but you want to figure out what sine of alpha plus beta or alpha minus beta, two alpha, alpha over two, any of those, the first step is to first write down the proper formula. So you can look this up in a table as sine of alpha plus beta. Well, that is equal to sine of the first angle, sine of alpha, times cosine of beta plus cosine of the first angle, cosine of alpha, times sine of the second angle, sine of beta. So notice we actually, in order to find sine of alpha plus beta, we also need to find cosine of alpha and cosine of beta. Well, we know how to do that. So let me just do a little side work here. I want to figure out what cosine of alpha is equal to. That's going to be x over r. And in this particular case, I know y is equal to, so I'm dealing with alpha, I look over here, sine of alpha is 3 fifths, so y is 3, and r is equal to 5, and I know that x must therefore be plus or minus 4, because this would make a 3, 4, 5 triangle. If you're not sure about that, you could always do x squared plus 3 squared equals 5 squared and solve for x. Now, because alpha is between 0 and pi over 2, x is going to be positive. So cosine of alpha is actually equal to 4 fifths. Okay, what about cosine of beta? Cosine of beta is also going to be an x over r, but a different x and a different r, perhaps. Well, to figure out this, the angle is beta, so let's look at what we know about beta. We know that beta is in the second quadrant, and when you plug beta into sine, the output is the square root of 7 over 3. So that means that y can be the square root of 7, r can be 3, and now I don't have that triangle memorized, so I will go ahead and do x squared plus the square root of 7 squared is equal to 3 squared, which is 9. The square root of 7 squared is 7, so this is x squared is equal to 9 minus 7 is 2, so x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2. And to determine whether it's plus or minus, I look at which quadrant beta is in. Beta is between pi over 2 and pi. That puts beta in the second quadrant. And in the second quadrant, we s know that x is negative. So it's negative square root of 2. OK, so cosine of beta is negative square root of 2 divided by 3. All right, so now we know what cosine of alpha is. It's 4 fifths. We know what cosine of beta is. It's negative square root of 2 over 3. And we know what sine of alpha and sine of beta are. So we can go to our formula and just plug in where we need to. So first, sine of alpha, sine of alpha, this entire thing, not just the alpha, the sine of alpha is 3 over 5. So we replace that with 3 over 5 times cosine of beta. Well, let's see. Cosine of beta, I just found, was the square negative square root of 2 over 3. So I replace the entire thing, cosine of beta, which should be some number, and it is the number negative square root of 2 over 3. OK, then I have plus cosine of alpha. I found that was 4 fifths. 4 over 5 times sine of beta. I was already given sine of beta. It is the square root of 7 over 3. And there's my answer. Now, I could simplify this a little bit. Let's see, 3 times negative square root of 2, that's negative 3 square roots of 2 over 15, 5 times 3. 4 times square root of 7, that is 4 squares of 7. And if I add the fractions, I already have a common denominator of 15, so this could be written like this. So negative 3 square roots of 2 plus 4 square roots of 7 all over 15. OK, and that's my answer. Put a box around it. Now, 
since I've done all this work, I know what sine of alpha and sine of beta is, and cosine of alpha, cosine of beta. I might as well go ahead and figure out some other problems here too. So, could I find cosine of alpha minus beta? Well, yes, I can because there's a formula for cosine of alpha minus beta. It is cosine of alpha times cosine of beta plus sine of alpha sine of beta. And now I have those four values, I can just plug them in. So this cosine of alpha is four fifths times cosine of beta, that is negative square root of two over three, plus sine of alpha. Sine of alpha is, ah, here it is, it is three over five, so that's three over five. And sine of beta, that's right, I already had it up there as the square root of seven over three. So four fifths times negative square root of two over three, plus three fifths times square root of seven over three. Again, you could simplify if you like, but that's how you solve it. We have figured out the exact value of cosine of alpha minus beta. Um, how about another one? What is sine of two alpha? Well, if we remember our double angle formula for sine, it is two sine alpha times cosine alpha. These angles, alphas, correspond to the angle that you've doubled there. Okay, so we just need to figure out what sine of alpha and cosine of alpha are. We've done that already. So this is two times sine of alpha is three-fifths. Cosine of alpha is four-fifths. So that's my answer. If I multiply this all out, two times three is six, times four is 24. So that would be 24 divided by five times five is 25. That's the exact value. Okay, just one more. Do it right over here. What is sine of beta over two? Well, there's a formula for sine of a half angle. It's plus or minus the square root of one minus cosine of the whole angle. This was beta over two, this is gonna be cosine of beta. And then I take that one minus cosine beta and divide it by two, but still in the square root. All right, so if I do this, I just say sine of beta over two, plus or minus. I'll figure out whether it's plus or minus in a second, but first let's just replace that cosine of beta with what it's equal to. Cosine of beta, the entire cosine of beta, not just beta, cosine of beta, is negative square root of two over three. So this will be minus negative square root of two over three divided by two. Now the only question is, do I make this a positive or a negative? And to answer that question, I need to a figure out where is beta over two? Which quadrant is beta over two in? Well, beta was in the second quadrant. So beta over two, in fact, will be in the first quadrant. And sine is positive in the first quadrant, so it really is positive, that number. One minus a negative square root of two over three over two. All right, so that's how you solve problems where you need to use the double or half angle, the sum or difference formulas for sine or cosine when you just know sine of an angle and maybe cosine of an angle as well. Well, I hope this has helped. Thanks for watching.